uh, uh, welcome you all to this Bhaskarachal Pratishthan uh, uh, series of lectures. Uh, very wonderful set of speakers uh, have been giving these lectures. And today I am very pleased to have Louis Merel from uh, University Paris Cité, uh, who will speak on torsion points on elliptic curves. Louis has been a friend of India for many years. He has come to India several times, and I am very happy that he has agreed to give this lecture. So, Louis, please go ahead and give your lecture. And thank you very much, Dipendram. So, I must say first that that the title and abstract are a bit misleading. Uh, in fact, this this talk will be mainly historical uh, and focused on. Uh, on uh, Yves Elbouarch. Uh, the reason why, actually, when I was invited uh, to, to, uh, to this seminar uh, for, for me to decide to talk on, uh, about Elbouarch is that Yves Elbouarch passed away uh, not long ago. It was on February 5, uh, two, uh, 2022. And um, uh, at the time, I, I noticed that very few people realized what his contribution to, to uh, what is called here the Darmon program or the resolution of Fermat's last theorem has been. And, and I thought I would say a few words about him. Uh, and I, I did a little bit of research. And it turned out that there is actually a quite, quite a lot to say uh, about, uh, about El Elguarch and that will occupy um, uh, all my talk, I think. Um, except for a, a few details at the end that will concern uh, the general question of elliptic curves, uh, of torsion points of elliptic curves. Uh, let me begin. So, um, so how do I do that? Uh, if I share this, okay. Uh, I guess, here it is. So uh, a few words about uh, the biography uh, of Yves Guarch. So I, sh I shall actually uh, point out that first, I'm not an historian of mathematics, so, um, so this should not really be uh, a lecture about uh, really history of mathematics. But, and, and on the other hand, El Guarch was known to me personally, but, no, uh, but I was not particularly close to him. I, I'd known him like, I, like, like I've known many colleagues. Uh, I have exchanged letters with him in the late 90s. And he had been kind enough to send me a copy of his thesis, which is uh, the most important document of uh, during this lecture. So El Guarch, uh, as you can see, was born in 1936 in the city of Angers, uh, which is a reserve in the west of France. Um, and you might wonder about his name, El Guarch, which might seem a little bit odd. Uh, in fact, uh, it's, it's a name which is sort of a typical of Brittany, a, west, uh, a region in the west of France, the western peninsula of France. And, and, um, and in, in Breton, so Breton is a Celtic language uh, close to Welsh, in fact, which uh, was spoken in my family. In, uh, incidentally, I don't speak it myself, but I look up uh, the name El Guarch, and it seems to mean generous greeting. Uh, like many uh, French mathematicians, uh, El Guarch was a former student of the Ecole Normale Supérieure, where uh, he entered in 1957. Uh, he did not only study uh, mathematics, he studied music as well. Um, so he, he did his thesis uh, under the, the direction of Châtelet in Besançon, um, and, and later became a professor in Caen. He, he, already when he finished his thesis, he was a professor in Caen, and he remained there until his retirement in the year 2000. Uh, and he had actually, uh, not only he studied mathematics, but, but uh, he published on the relationship between music and mathematics. Uh, I can show you a paper if that works, let me see. Okay, so I should, 
stop sharing that and and share something else. Um, let's see. Uh, I, I'm a bit awkward. I'm sorry. So just have to look at what where is the document I shall share. Okay, here it is. Uh, hope you can. No, this is not the right one. I hope you can see it. Can you enlarge it? Can you make it bigger? Uh, okay, so so I just uh, let me see. But the problem is that I don't see what I'm sharing with you actually. So I have this. Uh, a mathematical interpretation of. Uh, of scaling actually, so it's it's about scaling and the, so I, I'm not going to insist on that. I just wanted to show it. It's available online and, and very easy to find. So it's it's not uh, really important that uh, so you can see it. But uh, but he had a deep interest in, in the relationship between music and, and, and mathematics. Uh, okay, so where do I sh stop sharing? I'm not sure. Um, okay, let me return to um, uh, let me return to uh, the talk. Where is it? Okay, watch. Yes, here it is. I, I assume you, you, are, you are seeing uh, um, still the slide that was uh, same slide. So I'm going to change slide. Okay, so let's talk about the thesis of El Guarche. Uh, let me give you some, some context. Uh, at the time, the system was different from what it is now. Uh, the thesis were actually longer. Uh, in fact, there were two thesis at the time, uh, a short thesis that you prepare over a year or so, uh, and, 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 and with which you could get a job in a university, of, of course, a junior job. And, 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 and with this job, you could actually prepare the longer thesis. It was called test data. And it could take you five years or 10 years to complete your, your test data. And, and with the test data, you could uh, apply for a senior position in a university. So that was the context of, of studying, pre entering mathematical research in France at the time. Uh, you, you have also to be um, aware that uh, there were few textbooks, in fact, for instance, on elliptic curves, there was no book like Silverman's book. Uh, and there were relatively few uh, active researchers. Um, uh, El Guarche was preparing his thesis in the city of Besançon, uh, as I said, under the, the direction of Châtelet. Uh, he was quite, uh, and at the same time, in the Paris area, uh, there was a, 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 an, an activity of uh, refounding uh, algebraic and arithmetic geometry. Uh, under the guidance of Serre and then Grotendieck and so on. Uh, but El Guarche was away from all that. He was uh, still working in a very classical style, um, uh, on zone, and, um, and, and, and quite, uh, this, I mean, quite away from the modern techniques. But on the other hand, he, he was aware of certain classics that had been uh, Forgotten, I think. For instance, he quotes Beppo Levi, uh, uh, an Italian geometer uh, from the early 20th century, and the conjecture of Beppo Levi about the torsion of elliptic curves over Q, uh, a work uh, of, of which Barry Mazur was unaware, for instance, when he actually Mazur proved Beppo, Levi, Beppo Levi's conjecture, but was unaware that it had been formulated by Beppo Levi. But El Guarche knew that. Um, before I come to the thesis itself, uh, th there has been some preliminary work by El Guarche 
on the torsion of elliptic curves uh, in, in around 1965 that he published actually as notes of um, in the uh, uh, Compte Rendu de l'Académie des Sciences, so the, the accounts of the French Academy of Science. So let me show you uh, the thesis. Um, where is it? Here. I should stop sharing that. And okay, and now I share. Okay, so here is the front page of the thesis. Uh, well, it's it's a plural actually because the thesis at that time when you have the, the big thesis, the test data, uh, it was made of two parts. One part which was about uh, your main topic of research, and there was a secondary part where you had to uh, show your mastery of a part of mathematics which is not in your uh, main topic of interest. So for in, the, in this case, the first thesis, which is the main topic, called Courbe elliptique et équation de Fermat, so elliptic curves and Fermat's equation, and second thesis, secondary topic, uh, Choquet's theorem, so Choquet was an analyst, uh, functional analysis. So there was some work on functional analysis. And you can see the, the, the committee here with Châtelet and uh, Aperi. And uh, so Aperi is, uh, is a person who proves that zeta of three is irrational. He was in Caen at the, at the time. And already El Guarche had a position in Caen, but the thesis was defended in the city of Besançon, where Châtelet was based. And there is also uh, André Néron in the in the committee, which is well, of course, well known in arithmetic geometry. And, and to get, so this is the first page of the thesis, as you can see, and there is a date, and the date is June 10, 1972. That's when the thesis had been defended. And I can show you as well, um, I can show you, where is it? Okay, can I stop sharing that. And I can show you the, the, the page of, Acknowledgement. Uh, well, not in, in general, it's not very interesting, but you get an idea of who actually um, uh, El Guarche could interact with during the, the years he prepared his thesis. So, of course, there is Châtelet, his director, and Aperi, who is his colleague in Caen. Uh, two names I don't know, Bantoni and Denis. Uh, and then you have Neron, André Neron. Uh, who was actually uh, in Orsay at the time. Uh, Poitou, and also, so Poitou, of course, is uh, famous for the Poitou Tate uh, exact sequence in Galois cohomology. And, and, and there is Serre, and, and we are going to talk about Serre in, in, in a moment. And, and among foreigners, there were Cassels and, and Nagel. Uh, Cassels was uh, in Cambridge, I think. And Nagel was a Norwegian mathematician. Uh, I don't know where he had, he had a position. But, uh, but it's a fairly short list of, of, of interlocutors, I would say. Uh, let me return now to... Um, Okay. Um, yes. Yeah, so. Um, okay. So, what is the main point? The main point is this: uh, kill thing that um, uh, that we are sometimes called l'astuce elliptique, the elliptic trick. If you have an hypothetical solution to Fermat's that theorem for a prime exponent p, uh, non-trivial one, of course, a p plus b p equals c p, then you consider the elliptic curve, the corresponding elliptic curve e a p b p c p, and and uh, which is often called a Frey curve. So given by the cubic equations that you have under your eyes, y y two 
is equal to x times x minus ap times x plus bp. Um, so that's, that's an idea. And there is another idea also which goes with it. It's about uh, the points of p division uh, on, on that curve and, and the properties of the points of p division of that curve. Um, El Gouache himself had a, a, a sort of a nice uh, name for uh, this object. He called that an Orlando's mare. Uh, I think it, it, it's a reference to a classical, uh, classical poem, Orlando Foyoso in Italian, I think. Um, Orlando in French is Roland. Uh, and and his, his, his horse is, is a mare. And his mare is, is absolutely wonderful. It has all sorts of incredible properties, except one property which it lacks. Uh, it doesn't exist. So, so, so that's, that's the, I think it's a nice way to, to say it. So of course, a solution to Fermat's last theorem shouldn't exist, and, but it gives rise to an elliptic curve which has wonderful properties. Um, Um, yeah, so um, uh, actually I told you that the thesis was defended in, in 1972, but something uh, very interesting happened much, uh, much before. It happened in, in, in the city of Bordeaux in uh, 1969. Uh, as many of uh, you may know, so as, there is a, a biennial gathering of uh, French arithmeticians uh, called Journées Arithmétiques. And uh, they have been running since the early 1960s. Uh, and in 1969, they were held in the city of Bordeaux. And, and El Guarch was invited to give a lecture and, and gave a lecture on, um, I'm not exactly certain what he, 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 he what he said actually during the lecture, uh, because um, he, he, he stated a theorem and, and, and Serre, Jean-Pierre Serre was present and he objected actually, and he, he actually found a mistake in uh, El Guarch argument. So it was certainly about elliptic curves and about questions of ramification. Uh, I had an exchange with Serre uh, this weekend about this topic. And, um, and, um, and ask, ask him actually, not about actually this, this particular lecture, but about what he think about, uh, about uh, El, El Guarche contribution. And immediately he, he, he replied by uh, his memory of, of this talk. Actually, he was not sure about the year or the city, but he was certainly sure about the mistake. And uh, he told me, well, you perhaps should ask him about precisions, but, but uh, he said that um, El Guarche made a mistake akin to a mistake that Chevalet had made. Uh, if, if you have, uh, it's, it's, it's a Galois theoretic mistake. If, uh, if you have a certain solution of a, uh, of a polynomial equation, which is not Galois, uh, then you, can you cannot derive property of, of, of the other solutions from the property you have established from one solution. So that's sort of the gist of the mistake. Uh, I can show you. Um, yeah, some things which has been written long afterwards by, um, by El Guarche. Stop sharing, and now. Okay, so um, I hope you can read it See, also in French. Most of my documents are in French, I'm sorry, but I'm here to explain what they are. Uh, it, it's, it's, a, it's something that a letter that El Gouache sent to uh, the Gazette des Mathématiciens, it's a sort of a, French equivalent to the American notices of the IMS. It's, it's, it's uh, 
sort of uh, notices of the French Mathematical Society, if you like. And, and uh, um, El Guarch sent a letter about, so of course, after the proof of Fermat, and even after the proof of the full uh, Shimura Tanyama veil conjecture. And, uh, and he objects to the fact that some, Henri Darmon has, has uh, called uh, the construction of the elliptic curve a Frey curve. He does not object to the name Frey curve, but to the fact that uh, Frey was the first to consider this curve. And, and um, he mentioned a letter of Serre that uh, where Serre uh, asked him when uh, was this construction made uh, considered for the first time. And there is a second page of the letter. Uh, yeah, the second page is perhaps more interesting. A second page which, which is here. And he says actually at the top of, 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 um, of this page, in fact, the origin of this construction cannot be posterior to 1969, since I have uh, explained this uh, orally at, at the Journées Arithmétiques de Bordeaux, um, with the goal of proving that one of the points of order P of the, of the elliptic curve EABC would uh, generate an extension of Q unramified in P when P divides A, B, C. The argument I have used was false, and, and Jean-Pierre Serre, who was uh, present uh, during the talks, had uh, demolished it immediately. This is the reason why uh, those curves have been uh, suppressed in my contribution to the, uh, to the um, uh, proceedings of, of those journeys arithmetic. Uh, and he goes on actually to say things that I'm going to describe now. And he, he adds at the end, uh, the reader will remark that I did not reply to the question posed uh, in the letter of Jean-Pierre Serre. Indeed, uh, I have found the model of the construction, the construction from an hypothetical solution of Fermat La Theorem to an elliptic curve in no document prior to 1969. But it would be presumptuous of my part to conclude that the origin of this construction um, does not reside in one of the documents, in one, in one document that I wouldn't know. Okay, so this is his sort of answer to, uh, to the question of the origin of the construction, but I will come back to that. Uh, I can show you also, uh, it's available online. Uh, the contribution of, of um, El Guarch to, um, to the proceedings of the conference in, in Bordeaux. Uh, it's not, well, it's just to show you that actually, um, that actually uh, there is uh, little about uh, those elliptic curves. So there are con considerations about generalizations of Fermat, but uh, as he said, everything about the, the so-called Freight curve had been removed from, from his text, which is very short, as you can see, uh, just, uh, just a handful of pages. Okay, so... Um, <clears throat> It, it's, uh, uh, I was really amazed uh, by the precision of the memory of Serre about, uh, about this incident, in fact. So it's uh, 53 years back in time, and, uh, and he, he recalled exactly the argument. He, he, I think he says that mathematical memories are structured. This is why you recall much, much better uh, mathematical constants than, than other, uh, other things like a year or a city. Okay, so I stop sharing this one. Um, Can I just interrupt and yes? ask, so why is it that Fry's name has stuck? Why, why, why Fry's name stuck? Okay, so that, that's a, that's a, a questions that you have to answer for yourself. I'm going to give you the, 
the facts I know actually, but but there are reasons for that. But maybe I can answer this question at the end because that's that's, that's perhaps a question for uh, for when you have seen uh, all the documents uh, I I have. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. So I'll return to that at the end. Okay. Mm. Uh, so I have to return to this and and to. I know it's not the right one, sorry. Sorry for being a bit awkward. Um, it should be this one. Yes, so, okay, so let's turn now to the thesis. Uh, well, it's, uh, of course, a thesis, which is, uh, uh, I don't know how many pages because uh, it's not numbered from one to, so, so each section has its precise numbering, but I would say it's about 100 pages long. Uh, and uh, I have here a, a selection of results which are contained in the thesis, I have selected three, and there are variants actually of, of this and also more precise versions. But, but uh, I think the main uh, themes are around those, this, this selection of three results. One, one result is about, um, about non-ramification. Um, it's, it's a fact that uh, if you look at the so-called Fry curve, uh, associated to this uh, hypothetical solution to Fermat, uh, a to the p plus b to the p is equal to c to the p. And you look uh, at the field generated by the points of p division of that, uh, of that elliptic curve. And, uh, and, and when you look at that field, because uh, the discriminant of the elliptic curve is essentially a piece power, almost all uh, ramification van, uh, dis disappears. Uh, to be a little bit more precise, uh, the field is unramified outside of 2p, and the ramification at p is very mild. Uh, I would say that uh, El Guarch does not state this in a very clear way, in, in fact. So he has a more precise statement um, when um, uh, p divides uh, ABC, so second case of Fermat's last theorem. Um, and and his his way of proving things. So I told you that that uh, at the time uh, the foundation, the theory of elliptic curves was not uh, fairly widely known. As I said, there were very few textbooks. So the proof of El Guarch is are very idio, uh, idiosyncratic. Uh, and for instance, to prove non ramification, he invokes uh, uh, the book of Whitaker and Watson about. Uh, theta functions, which seems to be really weird nowadays. So that's one, one statement, uh, non-ramification. Uh, another interesting uh, result that he got is a sort of um, contradiction with, with Mordell's conjecture. Uh, it's so, well, it, <laughs> uh, he, he begins actually by uh, contradicting Mordell's conjecture for Fermat's equation. Uh, namely that uh, if Fermat's equation uh, of exponent p admits infinitely many solutions a, b, c uh, with uh, p dividing a, b, c, so that's the second case of Fermat's last theorem, then the modular curve uh, x1 of 2p admits infinitely many points over, over a certain number of fields. That is not explicit, I think. In, in, so I can show you the statement for this. which is in French, but uh, let me see. Stop sharing. Uh, should be 
this one. No. Okay, no, sorry, it's wrong one. Uh, no, uh, so then you are there. Uh, okay, so uh, there is a statement uh, uh, in the middle of, of the page, uh, on the right page. Uh, maybe I should, I don't know how to make it larger, maybe that way. The corollary is 5.2.1. Uh, so uh, the hypothesis are the infinitely many primitive solutions of Fermat La theorem for. Uh, for the exponent p, and, and then instead of talking about the modular curve x1 of 2p, uh, Elgoire speaks about the modular equation which relates j of tau to j of 2 uh, times p, p to the h tau, and this would have an infinitely many solutions. So, so that, that's uh, sort of, uh, so he was aware of uh, the connection, the sort of connection with, with model. But of course, at the time, uh, model, model conjecture was unproved because five things came only in 1983. And, and so uh, the third type of, of statement uh, I want to mention, extract from, um, uh, from uh, El Guarch's thesis is also very interesting. I guess, no, not this one. So the third one is, uh, about the torsion of elliptic curves. And it says, if Fermat's equation is, with, is without non-trivial solutions for the exponent P, is there are no elliptic curves over Q with a rational point of order two P squared. Of course, you can might want actually to consider the converse. Uh, if you have an elliptic curve over Q, which admits a rational points of order 2p square, then uh, there, is, there is a solution to Fermat for the exponent p. Uh, of course, it was still 19, uh, the early 1970s, and it was not known uh, that the elliptic curves over Q had bounded torsion. Uh, Mazur theorem would, would come uh, in 1977. So now, of course, now it's a sort of an empty uh, statement, but it, it was already very interesting, I think. So uh, I think uh, all three of those results, which were actually established, uh, I mean, which were a sort of straightforward, in fact. So there is no, uh, uh, had a, a sort of a modest uh, set of tools at his disposal, and he only could, could prove what could be proved with this modest uh, set of tools. And, um, and so all that is, in a sense, fairly elementary, but in a way, uh, it's sort of prescient, and, and it shows a very good intuition. Uh, of course, the result of non-ramification plays a key role in later developments. And similarly, in fact, the question of torsion of elliptic curves plays uh, uh, an essential role because you cannot prove uh, Fermat's last theorem if you don't know that uh, elliptic curves uh, over Q have, uh, don't have any Q rational point of order P. You really need Mazur's theorem to do that. And, and uh, I wouldn't say that uh, El Guarch has realized this, but certainly his work points toward all that. Uh, so I say that his techniques are sort of uh, uh, basic in some sense, and, and, but, uh, uh, but also there is something very important which is completely lacking, and uh, it's, it's a mention of modularity of elliptic curves. Uh, it answers partly 
uh, Dependra's question about uh, why why uh, Fry's name uh, stuck. The reason, of course, is that uh, is that um, um, uh, uh, probably El Guarche was not aware of, of the, the question of modularity of elliptic curves. It's never mentioned anywhere in his thesis. And you have to realize that uh, the modularity of, modularity of elliptic curves uh, was conjectured in printed form by Veil uh, in, in the 1960s, even if it has been somewhat considered before by Shimura and Taniyama. Um, so it's not very surprising that, that El Guarch was not aware of the modularity of elliptic curves. Okay, so, so perhaps uh, it's inter interesting to have a timeline. Uh, in 1969, there was an El Guarch lecture in Bordeaux that I mentioned. Uh, the thesis was defended in 1972. But I shall say that the thesis is not easy to obtain. Uh, as I said, um, El Guarch gave me a copy back in the late 1990s. But uh, I think Serre doesn't have a copy of the thesis. I, and um, in fact, Serre asked me whether the mistake of, of uh, El Guarch in Bordeaux was in the thesis. Uh, I don't think it is, uh, for, if only for the reason that uh, El Guarch had three years actually to correct his argument between uh, Bordeaux and the thesis defense. Um, and also, I don't know exactly what was in the lecture in Bordeaux, so we could not really uh, answer Serre's question. Uh, so, so the text, which is so often quoted of El Guarch, is not the thesis, but rather uh, the paper he published, which had been published uh, three years after the, de the defense in Acta Arithmetica. And this paper uh, essentially is a summary of the thesis. The, the results I mentioned are in the academic medical paper, uh, and the, the proof are not fully actually in, in the paper. Uh, El Guarch refers to his thesis to give the proof. Uh, th then, uh, after that, there has been a, a number of dramatic developments in the field. Uh, I can only mention a few of them. Uh, of course, Mazur's theorem in 1977 where uh, the proof of Levy's conjecture is, is, is established. Uh, Spiro, in 1981, uh, proposed this conjecture relating discriminant and conductors of elliptic curves. In 83, Falting's proof models conjecture. In 84, uh, Fry, uh, this is when Fry, I think it was in a conference in the bubble. I was not present and not active at the time. Uh, 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 Fry actually uh, proposed that uh, um, the, the existence of a solution to Fermat would contradict, uh, the, uh, would contradict the modularity conjecture of elliptic curves. In 85, uh, Osterley and Masser uh, formulated the ABC conjecture, partially, per, per, perhaps partially uh, uh, influenced by Spiro and also uh, uh, Fry's construction. Uh, and, and it was really Fry's uh, contribution which uh, provoked, uh, triggered actually an explosion of interest with uh, Serre's uh, modularity conjecture modulo P, uh, explained in a course in the College of France in 87, I think. This is when I was starting as a student. Uh, at, at about at the same time, it was published in 1990. Uh, Ribet uh, indeed proved uh, that the modularity of elliptic curve uh, implies Fermat's last theorem, so confirming Fry's intuition. And uh, everybody knows that uh, whilst in 1994 um, uh, proved the modularity of elliptic curve, at least in the semi stable case, and, uh, and consequently Fermat's last theorem. Uh, so to return again to Dibendra's question about why, why uh, Fry's name stuck, uh, I shall say that uh, the primary source in the field indeed quote El Guarch. So for instance, if you go to some papers of Fry, not the paper which is most often quoted, but other papers, 
let me show you that. Uh, Yes, uh, here is a paper of Rai. Okay. Um, okay, so I think it's a memoir or something he wrote in Sarbrücken, perhaps the habilitation, I'm not sure. Uh, if you go now to, um, uh, to, the, to the credits, uh, you can see that uh, the number four is Elbouarch. This is the Acta Arithmetica paper from 1975. Uh, so you can see that uh, Fry was quite aware of, of uh, Elbouarch work. Uh, and there is another paper published. Uh, okay, that might have been a confidential text because uh, it might, might have been an internal publication of the University of Saarbrücken, but uh, there is another text of, uh, of Frey uh, in Krell. Uh, I must be saying it. And, and this article, uh, let me see its page uh, 185. I go directly to the bibliography, you see. Uh, it's paper in German. And uh, even in the, the, the thesis of Elbouarch is, is cited. Uh, so here is a paper. Uh, okay, so, so the first page of the paper is, um, yeah, rational point of Fermat proven and good fist. Gutfisten Modul Coven. That's Frey's paper. Uh, but in those papers, uh, Frey was not considering the question of modularity of elliptic curves. It's, it's about, uh, it, it came later. Uh, about the bibliography again, uh, it's interesting to, um, to look at another item which is uh, Serre's uh, paper on, where is it? Yeah, this one. Okay, so this is a famous paper where uh, Serre formulates its modularity mod P conjecture. And in that paper, uh, he says something, so it's in French again, but I'm going to go to the point of interest and translate. Uh, where is it? If I can find it. Uh, no, it's not that. Okay, remarks. Application, okay, should be. Here. Okay, so this is page 202, and there is a remark. Um, Sir says la, the relationship existing between solutions of Fermat's equation and points of P division of certain elliptic curves already occurs in the work of Hurwitz, uh, dating back to 1886. And he adds, uh, it has been used uh, since then by several authors, uh, notably Elbouarch, Velu, Fry, and uh, the current method is, uh, the method followed here is, is taken from Fry. Uh, of course, Fry is posterior to Elbouarch, as I just said, and, and Velu, is, Velu uh, is, is a French arithmetician who worked on those questions uh, in the 1970s, he is also posterior to, to Elbouarch, I think. Uh, so Serre seems to say that uh, uh, Urwitz, but Urwitz, uh, this is the 19th century, uh, already considers the connection between Fermat and certain elliptic curves, but you shouldn't get, uh, you shouldn't be misled by this. 
Indeed, if you go back uh, to another text of, of Serre, a decade later, I'm going to show you. Um, yes, this is one. Uh, there is a footnote. Yeah, okay. It's a footnote at the bottom of page uh, 322 of, of this is the Bourbaki seminar that uh, Sayer gave in 1995 after the proof of, um, of, um, of Wise Proof. Uh, there was uh, two talks, one by uh, Sayer and followed by one, another one by uh, uh, Sterney. And there is a footnote, uh, and, and, and Sayer says, uh, I, take, um, I take advantage of, uh, of this opportunity to rectify an assertion from the paper I just show you, the modularity mod P paper, at the end of number 4.2, uh, I wrote the relationship existing between solutions of Fermat already occurs in a work of Orvit. Uh, Sarah says, it's wrong, as has been told by me by, uh, uh, been told to me by um, uh, Anne Chaparreur. There is no such thing in Orvit. Mea culpa. So, so uh, Ser actually retracts the assertion that Hurwitz has considered the, the connection between Fermat and elliptic curves. So don't get fooled by this. Um, I wanted to show you that um, uh, El Gouache has indeed been well quoted in the literature by, by at least in the primary uh, literature. Uh, there is still another text I want to show you. Uh, which might not be here. Okay, so it doesn't matter that much. Uh, the, the, the other text I wanted to show you is, um, is Wallace's paper, uh, uh, Modular Elliptic Curves and Fermat's Last Theorem, where, um, uh, the, where actually um, the, uh, his uh, theorem, uh, Fermat, is established. Uh, El, um, Wallace uh, quotes uh, El Guarche and says that. Uh, the Frey, the Frey curve has already been considered by, by El Guarche, but, not, not, uh, but uh, not the modularity uh, thing. So essentially what I've been saying. Uh, in general, uh, of course, there are innumerable accounts of the proof of Fermat's last theorem. And, and often, I would say, uh, El Guarche is not cited at all. So it's all about Fry curves and, and Fry's construction and, and, and so on. And I, I, I think. Uh, Why is cited in that? I don't know. It's, uh, I mean, you have to ask people, but, but uh, uh, if you go, look, go to Wikipedia, for instance, uh, it's sort of varying, but uh, uh, El Guarche uh, has, uh, has a French and German Wikipedia page, but no. English Wikipedia page. Uh, at, at the point I complained about that, and, and at the point he had a Wikipedia page in English, but it has disappeared recently. I don't know why. And, and um, uh, so, so it's sort of, uh, of course, you shouldn't uh, complain to Wikipedia. You should edit Wikipedia because anybody can do it in principle, but I've just been lazy. Uh, perhaps I should do it. Uh, um, and where is that? Uh, I, I've lost my main file. Oh, yeah. No, here it is. 
so yeah, you, you, uh, it's so in Wikipedia it's sort of varying. For instance, uh, Ribet, I don't think in his paper does not uh, cite uh, El Guarch. Uh, but if you look on the uh, if you look at the Wikipedia page on on, on of Ribet's paper, then um, then uh, El Guarch is indeed cited. So it's sort of uh, an inconsistent. One place where El Guarch is cited is uh, the book of Kubert and Langs on modular units. Um, there is an interesting piece of literature. So uh, earlier this year there was. Um, there was an article in the New York Times where, in fact, uh, where is it? Yeah, there is. Uh, is that it? Yes. Okay, so it's about uh, James Wall, um, a philanthropist who back in the around 1980 um, founded a conference devoted to Fermat's last theorem. And this article without giving much evidence, I would say, claims that uh, it was instrumental in, um, in uh, reviving the interest about Fermat's last theorem. Uh, it, as it happens, there is a, a proceedings to this conference so here is the article of uh, the New York Times article. You can, you can find it easily. Uh, and there is a companion article as well. And, and um, let me show you the proceedings of, uh, the, con of the conference. It is a proceeding edited by Neil Koblitz. Uh, where is it? Here it is. Uh, you see, it's it's a copy I'm showing you. I don't have the PDF, uh, and there is a, a preface. Uh, maybe it, be, it might be a bit too small to, to be read. Actually, I hope it's okay that way. Uh, where they, they indeed thank the the. the uh, the organizer uh, indeed thanks the, the philanthropist James Wong. And, and, uh, and indeed, there are varieties of topics uh, which are more or less connected to Fermat's last theorem. But at no point, so this was 1982, at no point uh, there is a Frey curve or, or, or El Guarch is cited anywhere. So Frey curve, uh, Frey, of course, uh, had not yet uh, formulated the connection to modularity, but uh, El Guarch works was sort of known. And, and it's no, nowhere mentioned. Okay, so my time is going to the end. So I, I should perhaps, I have a few things to say left. And uh, let me go back to my main. Uh, yes, it is. Okay, so I should say uh, quickly that El Guarch actually paid attention not only to Fermat's last theorem, but he was quite interested in, in a variant uh, called Dennis equation. So that I worked, uh, I worked on this equation with Henri Darmon uh, in the late 1990s. And we could prove actually that it has no uh, rational point except the obvious, the obvious one. And also uh, more general versions of uh, of Fermat's last theorem. So there is a typo in the last line. Uh, the last on the right hand side, it would be z times z, c times z to the p to the two times p to the h. So, so it's a quite general generalization of Fermat. And El Guarch indeed proves things uh, about this more general equation. Uh, there is an actor in this story that is even more rarely mentioned than El Guarch. 
And uh, I should say a few words about him. Yeah. Demyanenko, yes, it's uh, Demyanenko, who was uh, part of the Russian school published uh, essentially in Russia. And he cited in, by El Gouarch in the thesis uh, for one reason is that Demyanenko and, and, uh, announced uh, around 1970 that he had proved that the torsion of elliptic curves over a number field is bounded in terms of K only. So let, let me show you where it is mentioned in, in uh, El Gouarch thesis. I'm sorry to be so awkward with, with change of slides, but um, where is it? Yeah, here it is. So if you go, uh, so it's in French still, sorry. Uh, so uh, in the third paragraph, uh, El Gouache mentions Castle's conjecture that I mentioned that uh, the torsional ticker over a number field K is bounded in terms of K only. So the so-called folklore conjecture. Uh, fourth paragraph, uh, Al Guarche says, it is known that this conjecture has, has been proved by B.A. Demianenko. Uh, and and uh, Al Guarche thanks Castles and Serre to have uh, mentioned this proof to him. So it was a time when it was perhaps believed that the conjecture had been proved by Demianenko, and it took some time before the smoke cleared and uh, eventually. Uh, Demianenko proof was not found to be uh, convincing. So you can look at uh, the review of Castles in math reviews uh, at about that time about Demianenko's proof. And, and the other reason why actually I shall mention uh, Demianenko is, is the following. Um, where is it? Uh, indeed, Demianenko has uh, worked in parallel with, with El Gouache. And he had found a proof uh, of one of the results I mentioned, uh, namely that, uh, well, I stated, yes, okay. So, so if an elliptic curve over Q has a rational point of order 2p square, then Fermat's equation has a non-trivial solution. So this was found independently by, by Demianenko. And, and uh, the similarity with uh, El Gouache uh, has been noted by Cassels because uh, Cassels wrote uh, reviews, format reviews, both for the work of El Gouache and the work of Demianenko. Uh, yes, so in the late 1990s, uh, El Gouache uh, wrote uh, a book for a large audience, not for active researchers, uh, about for master level and, and perhaps even for uh, amateurs. Uh, the French edition appeared in, in 1997, dedicated to my own master, uh, uh, André Varusfeld, and, and, uh, and an English edition appeared a, a few years later in 2001. But there is a difference between the two versions. One noticeable difference is that there was an appendix in the French edition, which is not in the English edition. And the uh, appendix gave an historical account. Uh, perhaps I can quote now. Uh, uh, this is my translation of, uh, of, of uh, what uh, uh, El Gouache said, actually. Uh, in a section entitled, The Path from Elliptic Curves to Fermat's Last Theorem. He said, it seems that two persons only have walked along this path at the end of the 60s. Uh, Demian and Co and myself, we were both working on the conjecture of Bipolevi over Q. As I was trying to find an elementary proof of a result of Manin, which bounded uniformly the rational p torsion of elliptic curves defined over Q, I was surprised to discover that the existence of a rational point of order two times p to the h in a certain e of Q led to a non-trivial solution to Fermat's equation of degree p to the h minus one. And furthermore, in the second case of Fermat's theorem, the hardest case, 
as the closest periodically to a trivial solution. Okay, so perhaps I can end the, here my talk. Uh, uh, I intended to, I could not find actually a picture of, of uh, El Guarche uh, online, but I could find a movie of El Guarche online. So if you want to see what uh, look, uh, El Guarche looked like, I will put the link in the, um, I will put the link in, uh, in the chat box. So this is a lecture that uh, El Guarge gave uh, on the proof of Fermat's La Cirem in, in 2000. It's in French, of course, but uh, uh, unfortunately, but uh, you can have an, an idea of the man if you want. Um, 